Forget tigers. Forget lions and leopards. One ferocious feline killed its prey with canines nearly a foot long. But while the beast weighed close to half a ton, walked on paws three times larger than a Bengal tiger's, Smilodon remains one of the most enigmatic predators, past or present. Now, scientists on different continents are breaking into Smilodon's secret life through those incredible fangs. So there's lots of advantages of having these elongated sabers, one of which is the ability to have your prey bleed out very quickly. Dr. Larissa DeSantis is a vertebrate paleontologist at Vanderbilt University. The saber teeth are actually as long, if not longer, than some uh, T-Rex teeth. Dr. Nicholas Shimento is at the Comparative Anatomy Lab of Vertebrate Evolution in the Natural History Museum, Buenos Aires. This is original material from a saber-toothed cat, a Smilodon populator. It was found here, in Rio Areco, in the Pampas region. His new discovery in Argentina suggests that Knife Tooth used its canines not just to dispatch prey, but to battle with members of its own kind. The study that we conducted was based on two skulls that had a perforation in this area. And when we began to analyze the fang and then introduced it into the hole, it fit perfectly. The damaged skulls weren't found together, but both have similar holes at the top of the nasal area, between the eyes. Nicholas quickly ruled out natural decay and disease as possible causes of the wounds. His team concluded that the injuries could have only been inflicted by another large animal. A swift kick from a hoofed mammal would leave a very different type of injury. Bear or dire wolf fangs would have left much smaller punctures. Here, it had an oval-shaped hole, and the shape coincided with the canine of a saber-toothed cat. So what we did was insert the canine into that hole, and it matched the shape and fit perfectly inside the skull. The punctures in both skulls could only have been inflicted by other Smilodons. So this is a wound that would have undoubtedly cost the animal to die. The Argentine specimen shows a wound that appears to be instantly fatal. It's a huge discovery, as Smilodon fossils are relatively rare in South America. The lethal injuries may be from male cats fighting for mates or defending territory. But no one has been able to confirm the sex of any Smilodon fossil. Unlike many mammals, males and females were about the same size don't display a large degree of sexual dimorphism, which is that the males are fundamentally larger than the females. So it is pretty hard to tell apart males and females, and, and really not, not possible um, in these extinct uh, saber-toothed cats. Dr. DeSantis unpacks saber tooth behavior by examining minute details on and in their teeth. Larissa works on Smilodon fatalis, which roamed North America and chased its prey into the sticky La Brea tar pits. Smilodon was the only creature during the Pleistocene with foot-long fangs. Despite their fierce nature and lethal weaponry, her research at La Brea reveals surprising details about the importance of saber fangs. Smilodon kittens didn't sport true fangs until they were about three years old there is a true evolutionary benefit to having that tooth come completely in before the other tooth, the baby tooth, falls out. And that provides evidence that these animals were potentially provisioned or cared for because the teeth were so critical to their survival. The cat's impressive cuspids slowly grew while the baby teeth were still present, adding protection to the developing fangs. 
And what's really neat is that there's actually this sort of little groove in the inside of that deciduous tooth where the adult tooth will start to actually come in as well. Um, the saber teeth would actually grow in alongside that baby tooth until it was erupted, at which point then they had their adult saber. But then those fangs grew twice as quickly as those of modern day lions. That's twice as fast as human fingernails about a quarter inch per month. Until their weaponry was fully developed, Smilodon kittens needed to stick close to mom. It was taking a long time for these teeth to develop and those were that critical for hunting. Um, then there may have been an extended period of parental care allowing for these animals to become more mature and able to hunt effectively on the landscape. This suggests that the prehistoric cats may have had expanded family structures, similar to wolves. There has to be some level of care for the young individuals that's compensating for the fact that it's gonna take a long time for these sabers to develop. We're not sure if saber-toothed cats hunted in pairs or in prides, but they work together. We think that they were at least hunting in some sort of multiple cat scenario because of the high abundance of saber-toothed cats found at La Brea. On hot Pleistocene days, only an inch or two of sticky tar would have trapped animals forever. So if you have leaf matter covering these tar seeps or if it looks like it's a a watering hole and you sort of step in, all it requires is stepping in a few inches even to begin to get stuck and unable to move yourself out. Smilodon preferred to ambush its prey, force it into submission, and then bite down. In general, a saber-toothed back limbs were a bit shorter and more robust, and the front limbs were a little longer. It preferred to hunt using short bursts. The saber-toothed cats were taking down prey from more forested ecosystems, eating things like tapirs or maybe some camels or deer. The prehistoric landscape was rich with forests and prairies, with many big beasts, giant ground sloths, short-faced bears, mammoths and mastodons, and camel-like creatures lived side by side with Smilodon. Saber-toothed cats were the apex predators throughout Pleistocene America, first appearing two and a half million years ago, then vanishing just 8,000 years ago. There was a large variety of prey, and saber-toothed cats would choose the largest and heaviest. It could consume a young mastodon, so a 1,000, 1,500 kilo animal might have been hunted by a smilodon. Despite their dental arsenal, Larissa's research also reveals insights about the complex social lives of saber-toothed cats. Smilodon fossils from La Brea show injuries too, and something else. So specimens that have arthritis or have had an abscess to their tooth or who have had a broken canine, for example, these broken sabers. And one of the things that's often found is that there's evidence that they've healed from these injuries. They've lived for some prolonged period of time. Not all of the saber-toothed cats died in the tar. Many live to ripe old ages, despite serious injuries from panicked prey or other cats. With all of these different injuries, we started to wonder, were these animals sort of doing something different? If you were sort of kicked in the jaw or you had an abscess, were you sort of relegated to the, the you know, outside of the pack or relegated to hunting by yourself? Were you desperate? Were you, you know, chewing on carcasses and just sort of eating the scraps of what you could find? Larissa DeSantis can tell exactly what an extinct creature ate throughout its lifetime. You are what you eat. Everything you eat is incorporated into your tissues with a different sort of fractionation factor. 
whether you eat lots of fish or if you eat lots of meat, all of that is incorporated to your hair, your fingernails, your um, bones, your teeth. And what's great about teeth is it sort of locks in that signature and preserves it over thousands to millions of years. So we can actually analyze the teeth of fossil animals and get an understanding of what they were eating. By analyzing the chemical signature of a Smilodon's tooth enamel, she can see what it preyed on and where that prey lived. And by studying the microscopic grooves and wear on the surface of the teeth, she can tell whether the owner crunched bone or dined on delicacies. And what we actually found was pretty interesting is that the in individuals that were injured were actually eating softer foods. Um, and this suggests that potentially they were actually being provisioned food. So these weren't animals that were sort of just desperately scavenging for whatever food they could find. They were actually able to get access to the flesh likely um, and potentially by other cats. And so that was really, really an exciting find. I mean, that is quite remarkable because that suggests that these animals were really, you know, caring for each other. So this is the hole where a canine would fit. But this shows where it lost its canine and the bone grew in in this area. And so this animal lived for some prolonged period of time with the loss of its canine. This behavior is seen in African lions today. Rare footage from Tanzania shows an able-bodied lioness ensuring that a senior cat with a broken jaw has access to palatable food. While a discovery in Argentina reveals that Smilodon may have been even more ruthless than previously thought, these great saber cats clearly developed strategies that ensured their survival. Smilodon disappeared frustratingly close to us in time, going extinct around the end of the last glacial period when humans were relatively new to the Americas. Did they meet their match in us? The majority of herbivores had adapted to live in wide open spaces in the giant grasslands of South America. As it got hotter, environments like forests and jungles developed faster, which means that the number of giant herbivores began to decline. And in the last ice age, many were also being hunted by humans. A combination of these two factors, we're talking about climate change that altered ecosystems, plus human beings, deliver the fatal blow to many species. The other great thing about La Brea is that we're finding these fossils from about 50,000 years ago till the present. And so they have different ages and different dates. And so we can begin to actually tease apart the cause of this extinction, the effects of climate change and human arrival on the impacts of these animals and why they may have gone extinct. Saber-toothed cats were incredibly successful for a very long time. And some scientists believe that we're just in a lull between Smilodon and the emergence of a new species. Today, we only see one single feline species alive that has a similar skull morphology like that of the saber-toothed cat. The clouded leopard is a mid-sized cat that prowls the tropical forests of Indonesia with very elongated canine teeth if they're able to more effectively hunt by having elongated canines, um, then that could get sort of fixed in that population and you could see sort of these elongated canines yet again. Long killing fangs evolved so many times during the past 20 million years that there's every reason to believe that a new saber-toothed cat just might roam Earth again.